Well, we're getting ready to start another job today, and we have this quality porcelain feminine figurine. Uh, it's very good porcelain. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward job. Uh, there are some tiny pieces missing, uh, little slivers of chips and things around the brakes, but basically uh, it's going to be a glue up and a little bit of paint. But um, that's our next job. We've got a total of four pieces counting the uh, main body. We have all the parts and uh, so let's go ahead and get started on this. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Hixtel on this as my bonding agent and what I have here is uh, some uh, Hixtel I used on a previous uh, repair. Uh, it's a couple of days old so it's not super fresh and runny. So normally what you see me do on these kinds of repairs is we reassemble the object with uh, dry, with tape holding it together. And then I heat it up in the hot box and apply fresh Hixtel, uh to the cracks and it wicks into the cracks. Uh, it's not gonna, that's not going to work with this... Um, thicker Hickstall. So I'm just going to simply brush it on uh, and you know I can get it in there. I'll get plenty on there uh, without the you know wicking it down the crack. So uh, on all, to do that I'll use a, a brush. Can you zoom in on this really tight? We can see how th thick it is. It's probably like honey or maybe a little thinner. Can you see that? Okay. And you can zoom back out when you need to. So, uh, and, and a little bit of this stuff goes a long way. Even though it's um, thick, it will be... Um, I can spread it quite a ways. So I'm going to brush it on to this seam here. which you probably can't see it on this white. <laughs> and I can clean up my brush, this brush when I'm done with, um, I use, I use alcohol although acetone is better. The problem with acetone is it will also uh, unglue the, the hairs inside the brush. It'll loosen all that up. And, uh, or if it's not natural bristles, it will actually melt the, the hair on the brush. They're not hair. They're On an artificial brush, it's fibers, not hairs. Okay, so I've got a good, nice coat on there. I'm going just for good measure. I'm gonna make sure I have good coverage on the mating piece. Q-tip, some alcohol on it. Absorb some of the alcohol because 
I don't want it. I'm going to wipe off what's squeezed out on the seam here, but I don't want it to. I don't want so much on the Q-tip that it wicks into the crack. up with this fairly thin coating of this. It's a tight fit so that'll work really well. Let's see what I got. Yeah. I stick it down to pull the pieces together. The masking tape has a tiny bit of stretch to it and 
I can use it to force the pieces together. Now I'm checking my alignment. You run your fingernail over the edge. And if it's smooth, your, thumb, your fingernail won't get caught on that edge. You've got good alignment here. Okay, now the final piece is this uh, the foot, the leg. Set this aside to cure. I don't want to put this one in the hot box. <clears throat> I might. But I'm going to let it set up and get let this uh, hexel get thicker. And then I can put it in the hot box. If you get in there too soon um, and you have a lot of joints, uh, often it can slump out of place and uh, I'd rather not have that happen. Alright, it's a couple days later. I've had this uh, figurine in the hot box for a couple days, making sure the uh, Hickstall is good and cured. She is there at this point and now I need to put Miller Putt on these crack lines. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do right now.
So it's the next day, my milliput is cured and it's time to file it down. And we will probably go one or two rounds of this. I'm not going to make you watch all of it, but uh, you know, if you've seen my videos, you've seen me do this many times. So this gray that you're seeing here is the metal from my file. Uh, this um, porcelain is basically uh, dulling my file and leaving metal on here. So the way we deal with that is by I got some uh, alcohol on a uh, piece of paper towel and it just comes right off. And that's one of the reasons why I go through a set of these files about once a year. So I'm going to do that all the way around here, but I'm not going to force you to watch it. So we're ready to put paint on this girl, and uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to show um, how I do a method of uh color matching you get a lot of questions about this so if we look at the milliput fills i did along these cracks you'll see the milliput is very close to pure white titanium white the whitest white we have in our paints and so that can be beneficial when i'm color matching because i can see right now the difference between pure white and where i need to get to so um, one method I'm going to show you today of how I do color matching is uh, find a spot on your uh, repair that is not close to... This has a cold glaze on top of it, and it's been sanded so that the paint will stick to it. And if I do my color testing on top of the cold glaze, uh, I have to wipe it off. And at some point, uh, I may compromise the finish with the solvent or uh it might there might be enough tooth in the in the uh in the cold glaze that i can't really wipe it all off and uh if it's you know homing in having the wrong color homing in on the right color you, you don't want to have those mistakes <laughs> part of what you need to cut paint over so i go to a place that i know is the exact same color on the object and uh, where there is no milliput and I will do my testing there so in this case I have uh, to, to get this color I'm familiar enough with my paint system that I'm pretty accurate in guessing what colors I'm going to need to get where I need to go in this case we start I'm using Golden's acrylic paints and I start with my titanium white and um, and I add a little of this uh, shading gray. So this is tw 20 drops of white and one drop of uh, shading gray. And I'll put a dab of it on here. And you can see it's too light. That's, we know the color, acrylic colors are lighter when they're wet. And so we put it on there it may it may be hard to see the contrast in the uh, on the video, but then I take a hair dryer to that and dry it so it will get darker.
I was hoping I would have to add a little bit more color and home in on it, but it, it turns out that I pretty much nailed the color right off the bat. So, <laughs> But that's how I would do it. I would dry the paint so that it would reach its darker state of when it's dry. And then if it's not correct, I, I wipe it off. In this case, I'm using, uh, you can use water or airbrush cleaner, or in this case, I'm using rubbing alcohol. And I'll just wipe that off, get it all off. That's the wet side of the pad. This is the dry side. Now that's completely gone. And I'm ready to go with my paint. Alright, um, just really quickly I want to show you uh, an alternative method of doing the same thing. Sometimes you can't find a spot on your object with the color you need to match that isn't uh, already ha that doesn't already have a cold glaze on it or something. Or it's in a place where you can't do what I just showed you. The other alternative is to take a pure white piece of paper, take your color and put it on the paper. In this case it's white of course, and, but it's going to be darker. And I'll take that and, <clears throat> and I dry that. And so um, I put it on the, the white card and I dry it and then I put it next to the color and adjust it that way. So it's the next day and uh, we're done with the painting and I put a cold glaze on to protect the paint layer and, I, and it's glossy cold glaze. So I'm going to uh, mat it down to match the rest of the body with this product made by Golden 
it's a porcelain restoration glaze. This is the matte version. It also comes in gloss. But uh, I'm going to use this.